Hello. It's very early here. I feel like I need to whisper, although there's nobody here but us cats, right? Just us cats. <laughs> I know. I know, right? Just us cats. It's an awesome way to be. So um, I really woke up with a, first of all, best night's sleep I've had in a long time. That Scorpio new, uh, full moon energy just blew me over, raging through for like a day and a half, like maybe two days or something. And there was another purge of folks uh, or experiences, really. Let's just call them experiences, right? It's like I look at the experience and I say to myself, okay, this makes me unhappy. It, I feel sad. I feel boxed in. I feel however you feel, right? I feel, you know, helpless, hopeless, powerless, whatever the experience is that's low vibration. And I'm like okay, don't want that experience. So the very simplest way to do that when you're in the middle of an experience you don't want is two things. First of all, I'm kind of with the Marines on this one. I think it's the Marines that say embrace the suck. Embrace it. Embrace that suck and feel through it. Because if you push that away, if you push it away, like, oh no, it's not happening or whatever, you just prolong the time you're in the suck, okay? So what I mean by that, what the Marines mean by that, I think is when something is really difficult, embrace it. Because the it's almost like you're squeezing the life out of it. It's it, To me, it seems to me <laughs> that what you're doing is you are fully in your feelings about it. That's empowering. First of all, that's empowering. It has some it has a way of being there's real value in the suck. There's real value to it. And why does it suck? Have you ever asked yourself why? Why does a certain situation suck? Just look at it a little more objectively, look at it a little more. I know this is your logical brain. You can use your logical brain here for a second. And then use your feeling brain because the thoughts and the, and the heart chakra work in tandem to manifest, right? So if you've been creating the same situation over and over again, and it sucks, okay? It's something you don't want. When it shows up and the Scorpio full moon feels to me like there's a lot of stuff that's showing up for people that needs to be embraced and let go, right? Like, oh yes, I see, that sucks. This situation, this experience, don't blame the person or anything like that, you don't have to, because that's, you know, they're there to reflect something to you. It has value. So you see it and you go, you know what? This makes me feel sad and helpless and hopeless and heartbroken and all this stuff. And you, then you say to yourself, self, is that what I'm trying to create in my life? No, it's not. I bet you a chocolate donut, it's not what you're trying to create. If you want to create something that is joyful and uplifting and happy, feel in, in terms of feelings, however you feel those feelings, what is that? Turn your attention, go, okay, I'm I see what this is. I'm, you know, validating its experience. I see the lesson for me. Shoop, off you go turn my attention to things that make me happy and joyful. That's the experience I want to create more of, right? Abundance, full bank account, freedom to do whatever I want. I'm a Sag, okay? I like freedom. Freedom to do whatever I want. Freedom to go wherever I want, right? Going to Maine for the summer, moving to Maine. That's one of the things that is on my bucket list. I lived there for 15 years. Love it. It was the best place I ever lived. Everywhere else, awesome too. Lived all over the country. Every there, Each thing had its own awesomeness, right? And now this is the path. So live in that experience. And if you don't know the feeling, if you don't know, like if you're trying to create something that isn't, you haven't had it yet, right? Like this is not something. Like I've had Maine. I know what that feels like, right? So it's easy for me to access that feeling. If you want to create something like unending abundance, 
and all you've had is an empty bank account and constantly having bills, I want you to do a visualization exercise, okay? I want you to sit in front of your computer, <laughs> wherever you look at your bank account, opening your mail or whatever, wherever you look at the bank account, wherever you see that low balance, okay? I want you to envision it with six more zeros after it. And just think of the freedom of that. Be in the moment of, wow, I'd pay off those student loans. Wow, I'd get rid of this. Wow, I'd bring this in. I'd buy myself a scooter for my main summer, right? Like, you can. <laughs> you can do this. This is all within your grasp. Every construct that you live in in this world right now is all about making you feel powerless. Everything that's going on right now is about making people, individual people, feel powerless to create their reality. I'm here to tell you that's a lie. The first message is about embracing the suck and seeing for real, this is not what I want. Identifying not what you want is sometimes more powerful because you do know what that feels like, right? I don't want to go into that feeling anymore. So to create what I do want is a, lot of, is a lot of inner child stuff. That inner child knows what it's like to have not a care in the world on a summer day, right? That inner child knows what it's like. And even for people who you know, have been in difficult circumstances, I don't know if you've read Elie Wiesel, uh, Survivor of the Holocaust, in the camps, Okay, possibly one of the most horrific things you can ever imagine being in. Ellie Wiesel created an internal life, created his own experience inside. That's what got him through. There's a woman who travels around to local school systems. She comes to Windsor many, many times, comes to the Connecticut area many, many times over the course of the last 10 years. And her story is called Four Pebbles. I wish I could remember her name. If I can, I will put uh, more information in the um, in the description box as we go here, or I'll tell you more about it as we go. If you want to join the Empress Club, I'll put her whole story in the Empress Club. The Empress Club is what we're doing here. It's like creating a better life, okay? So her story is called Four Pebbles, and four pebbles, four perfect pebbles. And every day when she was in the camps, they she would go out, she had a... I believe it's a brother and then her parents who were all separate, separated. And she would go out into the yard and they would be standing there for hours and hours and hours. And she would search the grounds for four perfect pebbles. And when she found those four perfect pebbles, it gave her peace knowing that the other members of her family were alive and were okay. And they were reunited. So, even in the face of some of the most horrific experiences humanity has ever perpetrated on individual people. I'm asking you to create your own experience because you can. This is a lie that you are encased in this bubble that you can't escape from. It is an absolute freaking lie, okay? And you know, part of my job, part of my torch, part of my lighthouse is about helping leading you out of those feelings of being encased in a freaking bubble that you can't escape from. It's a lie, okay? It's a lie. In The Truman Show, he starts to figure it out, right? When he puts, when, he, when they think he's in the bedroom and they keep the camera on him for hours and hours and hours and he actually escapes, right? He sees the people behind the car and he tells, wow, every 15 seconds, it's a girl, it's a boy on a bike, it's the mailman, right? Every 15 seconds, the same thing. And he's like, wow. And then he takes the boat and he goes in the water. That's how they've kept him there. They've kept him there because he was afraid of bridges, afraid of water, right? They kept him there based in fear, an island of fear, right? That's how they kept him on that island. When he didn't have fear anymore, he rode and rode and rode and rode to the edge of the set. It's a movie set. And he bumped into the movie set. It's all fake. Okay? It's all fake. Being in this matrixy thing is all fake. So 
I know my mission, my job as a North Node Scorpio, <laughs> North Node and Gemini in Scorpio, in 8th house Scorpio, is about transformation, is about showing you that there is, you have power, all right? You individually have power to create your own experience, even in the midst of whatever you're dealing with. Think of Ellie Wiesel. Think of the woman with the four perfect pebbles. Even in the midst of things you think are beyond your control, which they are, you can create your own experience. Okay? And I want to talk about soul lessons today. What are the soul lessons? Because moving into this Scorpio energy, it is about transformation. Okay? This is part of the reason I even started this channel is the path to transformation. And that's a spiritual path. Twin flame and the conversations around this level of love, this high vibration of love is really the reward for working through all of these things and seeing that you're in a bubble that isn't of your own making and how to, how to escape from that, how to break out of that, how to be like, not real, you're not real. Dorothy threw the bucket of water on that witch. Not real. You're not real. When she faced her fear, remember what I said the other day? It was, I guess it was the air sign reading. Um, 20 seconds of ridiculous courage will change everything, I promise you. I'm going to read this quote because I love it. <laughs> um, it's on my, let's see. Oops, not that. Um, here we go. Here we go, here we go. 20 seconds, what's the actual quote? I wanna make sure I get the actual quote right. Um, here it is. You know, sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage. Just literally 20 seconds of just embarrassing bravery. And I promise you, something great will come of it. So the next time you want to fall down that rabbit hole and believe that you have no power, I ask you to first remember the message of the Marines. I hope it's the Marines. Embrace the suck. Okay? Embrace it. Feel it. See it. Know that feeling. What's the experience you actually want? It's over here. So move yourself into that. And thoughts, that's what's going to create the feeling. Your thoughts, right? Your brain and your heart chakra work in tandem. So your thoughts about being free, about being loved, about being wealthy, about having abundance in every single aspect of your life. Creating that is thinking that, seeing yourself in that position, what would that feel like? If you don't know what that would feel like, it's a little bit harder than if you've already been there and you do know what it feels like, but you can still do it. You can still feel the, because you know what the opposite is, right? This is a duality that can work for you. You know what the opposite of it is. So what is the feeling of joy? What are, what can you draw on? This is method acting now. Can you draw on experiences in your life where you felt that, where you felt that pure bliss, when you felt that love, when you felt that and really feel into it, 20 seconds of insane courage. That's what manifesting is. To be able to stand in front of the universe and say, this, I am worthy of this. I am worthy of this. And then gratitude before it even shows up. Just know it is and have a lot of gratitude for it. That's the recipe. Okay. That's the recipe right now. I'm going to do a little reading on soul lesson. Embrace the suck. I love that so much. It's really true, right? It's really true. So right now, what is the soul lesson for the collective? Um, folks who are watching this, messages for the folks who are watching this, messages for the collective. The soul lesson that needs to be learned as we walk into this Scorpio full moon Saturday, I will be doing a live, just programming note, I will be doing a live Saturday night, I think 7 p.m. Eastern, I have to make sure, you know, so, um, soul lesson. 
Hi, Ellie. Okay, so lesson here. Okay, so the card underneath. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh. 30 years, 30 years still makes me laugh. I got the train sync too. Death, transformation, soulful revolution, right? <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh every single time. All right, the current soul lesson. Emperor, taking charge. You take charge of your own life. Awareness of lesson. Wheel. It's out of my hands. But you know what? There is a certain amount of working with the universe. Okay? Subconscious understanding. Four of Pentacles. I hold on to things. I hold on to past things. Thing In this deck, it's like this person is like kind of a has-been. And they're looking at the new reigning champion or new... Um, savant that's going to take their place and they're this is fear okay that's fear fear of losing fear of losing things what is helping uh what is helping me through two of pentacles might need to learn a new skill or might need to hone your capabilities because it's this is the guy who's like right he's doing his work the fear is what is going to encourage you to do something to expand on your capabilities okay what will uh, resolve this lesson? Six of Pentacles. <laughs> wow, this is a lot Pentacle lesson. This might be about um, having uh, some help from an outsider, having um, asking for the loan, asking for the grant, asking for the support, going back to school, doing something that is um, going to, let's see, one more here. Hermit. Hermit. This is about wisdom. Hermit is about, it's not about being alone, but it is about following your path, solely your path. Because death, everyone's alone, right? Everyone's alone in death. We pass through that portal, okay? You're passing through that portal right now. This is about taking charge, taking control of your own experience. Knowing the wheel is working with you, okay, moving you forward. The Four of Pentacles is about the, this is a visceral human nature kind of a thing to hold on to what you already have as opposed to creating new, right? It's hard to let go of some stuff in order to move forward. Like you might be holding on to a person because that person, um, it's like they tether you to the ground. You tether, as the emperor, you tether you. Okay. No one else tethers you. You are the, the thing to be tethered to. Okay. You're, you're misunderstanding. You are the grounded. You are the grounding. You are the, as my father used to say, you are the skills and talents you bring to any position, you bring to any relationship, you bring to any experience. Don't forget that. This is you. This is soul. This is soul mission and it's also self-worth and value have thankfulness you don't have to hold on to the stuff you already know you already know it you don't have to hold on to it you can let go of some things so you know i mean okay we'll we'll, we'll make a closet analogy here marie kondo um <laughs> the closet analogy is i have bought i bought these two really cool kind of mini skirts from, um, it's a British company. I won't say their name, but they are, all their stuff is really cool. Their clothes are very, you know, and when I bought them, they were, they were too small when I bought them, but they were the only sizes left. And I was like, I gotta have it. Right. Have you ever done that? You're like, well, you know, maybe I'll fit into them. <laughs> I never fit into them. Time to go. I mean, I bought them like 10 years ago. It is really time to go because <laughs> not even those people think are cool. they're cool anymore, right? Not even the people who made them think they're cool at all, okay? So it's sometimes your closet, sometimes your stuff serves as a security blanket of like, well, you know, I have my, I have my really awesome um, knife, knife set because I like to cook a lot. I have my really awesome pans. Um, I have a cool 
uh, array of very exotic spices and, you know, all kinds of stuff. I have all kinds of kitchen stuff. And that is kind of making me like a turtle, right? Like I have to carry around all this stuff on my back every time I go where I go. And there's some stuff that I no longer use. It's just taking up space. But I loved it when I bought it, and so I hold on to it. And so this is about letting things go. When new stuff is coming in, when you're taking charge and you're moving things forward, there's some stuff that really needs to be let go of, even though you loved it at the time. Even though it's, I mean, okay, well, it's just kind of taking up space, right? Even though, like, just, right? It doesn't need to be taking up space because you, your job is to expand here. Your job is to bring in new things or not stuff necessarily, but new knowledge, new awareness, new, new capabilities, right? Give me more on this two of pentacles here, right? Six of cups. Someone, some a soulmate is coming back around here. So this is primarily about you, but that six of cups is a soulmate energy. And this is the six of wands. Okay. So that's interesting, isn't that? So we got the six of pentacles, six of wands, six of cups. That tells me there's a soulmate coming back around. And there's also, it, it requires you to be stable requires you to be in your solid place. I've been saying this for a really long time about moving out of things that have made you feel, you know, like this is an old job that, you know, you can do, you roll out of bed and you do it. It's no big deal, right? And you get a paycheck for it. You're like, yeah, whatever. But in reality, your job now is to move up, move forward. Take those skills. Don't throw them away. Some of them are obsolete. LinkedIn. Some of them are obsolete, right? Some of the things that we used to think were important are obsolete now because innovation is happening so quickly. So some of the skill set that you used to know how to do doesn't matter anymore, right? The knowledge is still there and the foundation is still there. Okay, I don't need, I can now fill it with more stuff that's relevant right now, okay? Some of the, you know, I have my records and books from clients and things that I've, given to them about video marketing, how to make videos, how to be on YouTube, how to be in social media with video, which is what I used to do for a living. And a lot of that now is obsolete. I have a new awareness, right? Through this channel and through all the other, the amazing affiliations I've created and friendships I've created online and um, sponsors who have just come to our door, right? Like I've created something new here. None of those books would have told me how to do what I'm doing here, right? So I, I have the knowledge, that's cool, it's a foundational thing, but I let it go, now there's new knowledge here. That's what's happening here. So not only is that gonna serve you in terms of bringing in new abundance for financial uh, grounding and stability, I love that you got the emperor, okay? Because uh, that's all four kings, that's high vibration. And you have to sort of be in this place of stability, emotionally, spiritually, believing in yourself that when the wheel comes through, you are, you know, right? What is luck? <laughs> preparation plus um, uh, preparation, or what is it? Preparation plus opportunity, combining, right? You're there, you're there with the knowledge. You're there, you're ready to meet the road as it's rising up to meet you. Can you imagine, I used to have these dreams all the time, uh, cause I watch a lot of baseball that, um, I wake up and I'm like on the mound in Fenway, ready to pitch against the Orioles. And I'm like, I, I, I'm still me, right? Like I, I don't throw, you know, I haven't went, I haven't gone to LSU and thrown for the World Series in college. I haven't done any of that. Like, I don't know how to throw a fastball. I don't. But I wake up and I've got a number on my back and I got a hat on and I got the ball and here comes, you know, Terry Francona or here comes the, the uh, Alex Cora out to meet me at the mountain. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> right? So <laughs> I've had those dreams before. And <laughs> what I think this is telling you is to get ready. Get ready because there is new stuff coming in. There are going to be new opportunities. People are going to offer you um, 
money and time and materials and grants and loans and new jobs or new opportunities to expand, to help bring humanity forward, help in your particular, whatever you're doing, whatever your work is, right? North Node, follow your North Node. That's where your work is in this lifetime. And it can, a lot of us, it's literally about the work, 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 right? That you trade for money, right? The energy we expend. Money is just energy, right? Energy for energy. Must balance, okay? So six of pentacles. And I think this is where a lot of spiritual people misunderstand, no disrespect, but they're putting energy out. Energy needs to flow back. Energy, energy, right? And sometimes that energy comes in the form of human contact, other people who are, you know, of like mind, energy, energy energy out energy in and if you're putting good if you're putting good i say good but if you're putting positive loving joyful energy out that's what comes back that fills your cup that allows you to be open that allows the universe to bring abundance in all in all levels in all ways to your door okay uh, and uh, the, where i think a lot of spiritual people get it wrong is they don't know how to receive that's the feminine energy empaths everybody you guys are putting out amazing work in this world learn how to receive when someone comes to you and says i want to you know i want to sponsor your channel say thank you <laughs> don't be like oh no that's not what we do here no say thank you say thank you allow yourself to receive that that's part of my job here is to help you move down that road of being balanced, your masculine energy, you're putting work out into the world, learn how to receive it. We, a lot of us think in the feminine energy or the divine feminine, think that, oh, well, you know, we're doing our work as empaths and that's a feminine thing. No, it's a masculine thing. The feminine part comes with receiving. Okay, do you see the difference there? The feminine part comes from receiving. The things that are going away the things that need to, that stop you from doing that, let's talk more about that. I feel like this is about being a guru. For anybody here who resonates with this, and then they're like, oh no, I can't be a guru, I hate that term, you know, it's like too grandiose or something like that. A guru is a wisdom, is wisdom that other people listen to. <laughs> That's all it is, okay? Don't get overwhelmed by that. Don't get overwhelmed by that, right? So this whole idea of three of swords and the page of swords, information that has broken your heart in the past is going to make you wise. 100%. I'm going to move my fan because it's hot in here. Um, that is the truth. Information that has broken your heart in the past why would it, you know, when something breaks your heart, why does it break your heart? Because you had hope. Because you had love and joy for this particular thing. And it didn't work out how you wanted it to. This is about embracing the suck again. That energy, learn, see how this little guy, this page of swords is looking at those three of swords. Look at the things that break your heart. Embrace that suck. There's something here for you, whether it's in love relationships, whether it's in business or, or um, the work you're doing, the healing work you're doing. That is, that is something here to understand that that's part of this work is healing others. That's where you're getting that information. You know, when I said about when you look at an experience and you don't have any, when you see something and you're like, well, I don't want that. But or what I do really want that, and you don't have any experience with it, you see how hard it is to travel that distance? It's a lot harder than when you've had experience in it and you know. Comes right up. You're like, yep, I know what that's like to get my heart crushed. For some of you watching, it is about helping others overcome um, broken hearts, overcome disappointment, overcome... And why are we disappointed? Why do we have a broken heart? Why do we have those things? Because we had attachment to it. We had an attachment to it. 
that's different than having a belief of things showing up and seeing the energy of it and manifesting it and feeling into it because you're feeling into a feeling. You're not saying, you're not saying, oh, I'm, I'm thinking that a hot fudge Sunday right now would give me that feeling. You're saying, I just want that feeling. However it shows up in the universe is how it's going to show up. I want love. I want that high vibration, amazing love. The universe is going to bring you that person who's in alignment with the, what you're emitting. So be in the vibration you want to create. Be the ball. Be the person you want to create. That's what will show up. That's what will show up. Okay? So when you see this energy of, oh, there's a broken heart, the hermit, the hermit, goes and hides, right? The hermit, but there's another side to the hermit. The hermit is wise. The hermit is showing wisdom. So being a guru, y'all, okay, is embracing the suck <laughs> and being like, I can find the way out of this. I know I had raised my torch, right? I know the way out. Follow me. And that's your job. That's one of the jobs here, because I see six of cups and six of wands. This is about true, deep, connected, soulmate love. This is about overcoming the obstacles to that by being in your power, by being the emperor, by doing that which brings you joy, by manifesting the work that brings you joy, by being this light for other people. The hermit has his little lamp. Okay, that's the job here. And when you're in this heartbroken place, you know it's very hard to light that lamp for other people. But what if you could use that information? What if that's valuable information? Right? What if your experience can shed light for someone else? That's what your job is here. That is what your job is here on this planet. If you're watching this video, that is what your job is. Okay? <gasps> okay, so I feel back on track to do more of these videos. Going to do more of these videos. If you want to join the Empress Club, we talk about all this stuff. Uh, you're going to have to answer the questions to get into the Empress Club. We don't, only because, here's why we ask the questions, we want to know where everybody is, right? We just want to know what information is going to help you or what you can provide others, right? That's also good. So when you come to the Empress Club, it's a Facebook group. Um, click on the um, join button and then answer the questions. Otherwise, they won't approve the join. Okay. All right, my lovelies. There you go.